Hello class. Okay, this is supply and demand lesson number eight, estimating the multivariable demand curve. So if you haven't seen the uh, elasticity lesson on multivariable demand curves, you probably should watch that before this. I think that's a elasticity lesson number five, multivariable demand curves. All right, let's get started. So consider a generic form of a multivariable demand curve, and it would look like this. The quantity demanded of some good, let's call it good x, is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 independent variable 1 plus beta 2 independent variable 2 and so forth. So in the language of statistics, this thing, beta 0, is sometimes called the intercept and sometimes called the constant. Then beta 1 is just the coefficient on the first independent variable. Beta 2 is the coefficient on the second independent variable and so forth. The only place you can really get in trouble is these betas can be negative, and if they are, this positive sign is normally written uh, as minus. So don't drop that sign. The if beta 2 is minus 5, it'll look like this. Beta 1 times independent variable 1 minus 5 times independent variable 2 and so forth. Just remember, beta 2 is not 5, it's minus 5. It's a common mistake students make. Okay, so here's, I think this is a multivariable uh, demand equation that we used in an earlier lesson. And so you can see that this is the constant term, 100. There's no variable attached to it. Then this, minus 5, is beta 1. And px is the independent variable 1. Then the number 4 is beta 2. py would be independent variable 2. Minus 3, don't forget the negative sign, is beta 3, and then PZ is independent variable 3, and so forth. So there's income, our last term. Okay, so that's how you would uh, plug in or write out a typical multivariable demand curve in the generic form. Now, what's next? The next thing to do is to get the data. So what you need is a data set from the real world that uh, collects data on all the independent variables and, and the corresponding dependent variables. So you imagine an Excel spreadsheet. You've got a column of values for the quantity demanded of x and the corresponding values of px, py, pz, and income, and so forth. And what you're going to ask the computer to do is to generate a multivariable equation that uses this information, which we call the independent variables, to predict as best it can what's going on over here with the dependent variable. Now to do that, we need Excel. So I'm going to have to move over to Excel for a moment. And what you see here is a data set from an old exam. So you have here the quantity of widgets. So this is sales of widgets. This is the price of widgets that are connected to those sales. This is income at the time of those sales. And this is the advertising budget wherever those sales were made. So what's not listed is where this data comes from. These could be different stores or different towns or maybe uh, different time periods. But you just need data. And what you're asking the computer to do is to use this independent variable data, this stuff right here, to make the best multivariable equation that you can that will predict what's going on over here. So here's how you do that. You go to the Data tab. And if you've already installed Data Analysis, it'll show up over here, Data Analysis button. If you don't see this, you'll have to install it. You might be surprised to know that Bill Gates doesn't install all the features of Excel when he sells it to you. Some features are left uninstalled and you have to install them manually and this is one of them. So if you don't see this button over here, Data Analysis, under the Data tab, it means it's not installed in your computer and I would recommend that you just do a Google search and see how to do it. In my version, it's over here under the File thing, but I don't want to go there. So you can just do a Google search and you'll find it. Okay, so you click on Data Analysis and then you search for regression. So you have all these options here. Find the regression algorithm. Then you get this drop-down menu. Now, Excel 
or Bill Gates uses slightly different language from what most statisticians use. He talks about the X range and the Y range. And what he means is the Y range is the dependent variable. That is the thing we're trying to predict. So we're trying to predict this. So I'm going to grab this one cell, QW, the identifying cell, and all the data. Okay, so that's my uh, dependent variable. And then I'm going to click down here. I'm going to do the same thing for the independent variables. So I'm going to grab this one cell that identifies each of the three columns and all the data. So that's my independent variables. Now, you see this little box here that says labels? I need to click that box because if you remember, when I grab the data, I grab that one identifying cell at the top, which Excel calls the labels. So if I don't check this box, Excel will think those words are part of the data and it'll get all mixed up. Okay, so I got that box checked. And now the last thing I need to do is tell Excel where to write the results. So I usually write the results right here, especially on a small problem like that. I write the results on the same page where my data is. You could write it under a new tab here and so forth. So uh, I have my cursor blinking in this little square. And I just go up here and I find a square kind of near my data and up near the top. So what will happen is, is when I click go, the regression printout will print out to the right of the square and below. So this part will be filled up with all the data that regression generates. So here we go. Boom. <laughs> I'm always amazed when this happens because when I was your age, what we just did took a week. And that's if I didn't make a mistake. If I made a single mistake, it would take two weeks. Anyway, so here's my regression printout. Now, in business, we don't use ANOVA too much, so you can just ignore this part. Let me just see if I can. You can ignore that. We don't need it. What we need is this, this stuff right here, the intercept, PW, income, and advertising budget. Here's our coefficients and eventually we'll need the p-values. All right, and then we need some of this stuff up here. So what I've done is I've already run this regression earlier, and I took this data and I copied it back to PowerPoint. So let's go back to PowerPoint and you'll see. So here's the data. I just copied it from that Excel uh, printout. So here are our coefficients. So this thing, uh, well here, let's do them like this. That's the intercept, right? Remember, beta zero. PW, that's our first independent variable. Income, that's our second independent variable. And advertising budget is our third. Okay, so that's where that stuff goes. And then these numbers, this is the constant term. So beta zero is going to be this thing, 678. Beta one is going to be minus 79.9. Beta two is going to be 0 0.0054 minus, right? And beta 3 is going to be this thing, positive 22.43. So now I'm just going to put those numbers into my equations. So this is the regression equation generated from the data. In other words, this is the very best multivariable linear equation that can be generated from the data that best predicts what's happening to sales of, uh, I think in this case it was widgets, QDW. All right, so this is our dependent variable, the thing we're trying to predict, and these things over here are our independent variables. Now, the next thing to consider is, well, how well does this equation predict sales of widgets? And you answer that by looking at this thing right here, the R-square. So the R-square ranges from 0, which means it doesn't predict at all, to 1.00, which would mean it perfectly predicts. So in this case, it's 0.7795, or in percent, roughly 78%. And here's how you interpret that. Now, this is important. So remember how to do this because I'll probably ask it. 
What does the R square mean? All right, so it means in this case about 78% of what's happening to the dependent variable, 78% of ups and downs in this data from that spreadsheet is explained by what's going on with the price of widgets, income, and the advertising budget. So about 78% of this is explained by that, which means, of course, about 23% of what's going on over here is not explained by this, and it's explained by something else that we didn't measure, or we don't understand, or it was too expensive to measure, or something. But about 23% of what's happening here is not explained, but hey, 78%, uh, yeah, 78 is explained. So that's how regression works. It's an unbelievably powerful tool. Now if you think about it, once you have this equation, you could figure out elasticities. And here's how to do that. We just need values for these things. So I looked at the data set and I picked typical values for these things. So imagine that the price of widgets was $1.20 and income was about $28,200 and the advertising budget was $22.25. Now listen, this number might uh, seem odd to you, but remember, the units weren't given in this problem, so it could be $22,000 or $220,000 or something. We don't really know. It's just a number that was given to us. In the real world, of course, you you would know what that advertising number really means. Okay, so given those values, and notice I'm just going to plug them in up here. I'm going to use my calculator. So given those values, I can work through this equation, and I can figure what predicted QDW is. The regression equation predicts, using these values, that sales of widgets should be 929 units. The regression equation predicts this. Now, in the language of statistics, they have a fun term they use. They call it hat, QD hat. And it gets that weird term from this little caret that they normally put over the dependent variable to indicate to everybody that this is a prediction. The regression equation predicts this. What actually happened in the real world, of course, you could look it up in the table to find these numbers and see what really happened in that time period or whatever. But the regression equation predicts this. Got it? Now, from this we can get the elasticities. And here's how you do that. If you've viewed the multivariable elasticity lesson already, you know that own price elasticity is the derivative of the QDW equation with respect to the variable PW times the value PW divided by the value QDW. So in this case, the derivative of the QDW equation with respect to the variable PW is just this coefficient right here. That's this number, minus 79.93. Then times the value of PW, which was $1.20, divided by the value of QDW, which was 929. So on price elasticity, we get this number, minus 0 0.103. I'll let you go back and review what this is, but it's inelastic. And I probably will ask you, if I make you work one of these things, to say in English whether that's elastic or inelastic and how you know. Similarly, income elasticity is just a derivative of this thing with respect to income, right? times the income value, which is that, divided by QDW, which is that. That works out to be this, right? So income elasticity is minus 0 0.164. So as I read that, it's obviously an inferior good because when income goes up, sales go down a little bit, but not very much. So a 1% change in income creates just over a 1% uh, decrease in sales. Maybe that is an important number. Okay, so here's the advertising budget. Do it the same way, and you get that the advertising budget is positive 0.537, which would mean a 1% increase in the advertising budget generates a 0.537 increase in sales. Okay, so there are, there are the elasticities. So, in summary, multivariable demand curves can be estimated using multivariable regression. That's what we went over. We've covered the fundamentals, but there is much, much more. 
regression is an unbelievably powerful tool and uh, it has great usefulness when used correctly but it, it can also lead you to really bad conclusions if you, if you use it recklessly or you don't know what you're doing so all I've exposed you to are the fundamentals so it could be that the independent variables are significant or insignificant that is in the problem that we just worked it's possible that maybe only one or two of, the, of those right hand side variables were generating all the predictive power and there was a variable in there that wasn't really doing anything and there's a technique for figuring that out but we can't cover it in this lesson similarly the right hand side variables can be correlated that means that one or t uh, two or three of those right hand side variables might move up and down together and if that happens the regression algorithm can't figure out which one of the two variables is doing all the work and it leads to all kinds of chaos so when you have correlated right hand side variables uh, your regression equation is very suspect even the signs can be wrong this is a really bad thing okay and uh, regressions don't have to be linear they can be uh, multiplicative and again that's uh, beyond the scope of uh, this lesson so finally I hope you can see that regression is a really powerful tool but be careful with it uh, we've used it to estimate demand curves it can also be used to estimate other things like cost curves and production functions and econ probably if you've ever uh, worked at a real estate office or even used a real estate agent you know that they use uh, regression equations to predict uh, the selling price of a house and on their right hand side on their independent variables they'll have square footage of the house number of bedrooms number of baths you know whether it has a garage or not stuff like that so regression is used in a lot of ways okay so if you want to know more about regressions or you're having trouble with a regression in some other class feel free to call me and I'll be more than happy to uh, help you alright so that's it for lesson number eight. I hope you found it helpful.